Um, welcome everybody here uh, for this Sunday session. We are so excited um, to join you today um, at the virtual Beta NYC School of Data 2021. Um, and um, my name is Greta and I am a co-director of Community Tech New York. We are an organization that works directly with communities to demystify the internet and build um, digital equity and digital rights. And um, this session uh, is happening at this really interesting moment. Um, so Noel, a couple of minutes ago, mentioned the internet master plan for New York City, which emerged about a year ago. And right now is sort of in the throes of implementation. Um, lots to talk about there. But the other thing that has happened is that um, the federal stimulus has just come out and it has in it, um, you know, $7 billion for K through 12 broadband another 10 billion that's sort of a secret pot of money for um, broadband infrastructure and adoption and then um, there's another 92 billion dollar bill in congress right now sponsored by senator wyden or sorry senator um clyburn and so we're gonna see a lot <laughs> happening soon and basically what we need to do as a community is be ready with a plan because uh, pretty soon people are going to start writing checks and we have to be pushing on the folks that are writing those checks and just making decisions about that money right now and then we have to be ready when the checks are written um, to be able to put those right into projects um, and that's going to take a lot of forward work on community side. So this is a great moment to have this conversation. And I'm so excited um, to have CS here from Composites Collective facilitating this deliberative conversation about um, our rights on the internet as New Yorkers. Um, and I also am really grateful to Erica Kermani, who has um, pulled this event together and, um, you know, done a lot of the the um, heavy lifting and conceptually and um, logistically. Um, Erica, do you have anything you want to say this morning? Sure, thank you. And thanks for the background. Um, it has been a great process to be able to bring you all here today for this session and also via the Polis survey so that we can really capture, yeah, like a collective and community led kind of perspective and, and, and collection of values and principles that we can turn into demands. And of course, this is not the only space that it's being done, but um, it's, it's an ongoing conversation and um, we're glad that we can have them and push, hopefully push you all to have more of these conversations as well if you're not already. Um, and it's, it's looking like a great group of, of different folks involved. So I'm excited for this. Thank you all. And of course, um, definitely uplifting CS's work in um, this kind of facilitation and this kind of conversation. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, so hi, folks. I'm CS. Um, I work um, in organizational transformation. I help organizations sort of shift power and bring more participatory practices. Um, and I also facilitate. And um, yeah, so these, I'm really into sort of participation and um, making sure that like voices have a say, especially um, in our cities and how our governance works. So I'm super excited uh, to be here and to get to facilitate uh, the session. It has a near and dear, um, near and dear to, to me. So we were expecting a bunch of more people. Um, and what I what I'm hoping to do today, on a little rundown is we um, we sent out a little polis survey conversation to sort of get an idea of um, what ideas and sentiment was out there, what was floating around. 
And what we'll do today is take a look at those. And the plan is to pick some of those areas and break into little breakout groups and actually think about like what would be some concrete like solution imp implementation. Like how might we actually um, have a municipal option like a broadband, free broadband for everyone in New York City. Right, for example. Um, and so actually trying to get concrete and specific. Um, so as what Greta is saying, like we can take this information and actually use it to continue the conversation or use it to push for specific policy or specific ideas. Um, and so the skills that we'll be using today are a mixture um, from uh, some work in Taiwan that they use for policy creation, also um, just uh, sort of design thinking, um, ORID facilitation frameworks, various various things combined. And so, uh, without further ado, please please do uh, take a chance to participate. Um, I will pull it up here. Um, so the idea here is that we we want to get an idea of what people think and feel about NYC's internet usage and access. And Polis is an open-ended survey where you, um, unlike other surveys, you can actually add your own perspective. So you agree, disagree, or you pass to the statements. Um, and if you see something that's missing or something you wanna expand upon, you can add it. And so it'd be really great if we can actually continue this conversation. Um, and so send it out to your network groups, folks that um, folks that you know, folks that you know might be interested in this. Um, please do send it out. So we'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've learned from this polis conversation and how we can use this and how we're going to use it for um, for our conversation. So the interesting thing about Polis is it shows you people's opinions over, um, over an issue. And right now, in terms of this topic of internet usage and access, we've got three opinion groups. And interestingly enough, um, they're, they're kind of like, they're separate. They're not super close together. So um, A, opinion group A is a little bit um, different than C and B in the sense. So let's take a look at the report and see what we can learn. And I'm not gonna dive into everything. I wanna focus on, on what's the most important for our conversation. Okay. So this first part shows us how divisive the conversation was. And in general, there's a lot of consensus around certain statements, like I want transparency in how my internet operator provides, I want a municipal broadband option to all residents, NYC should provide it, like water or a utility. Every student in New York must get a free Wi-Fi ready programmable computer. There's a lot of consensus around that. Consensus around free public Wi-Fi, um, concerns around privacy, that digital access is, and communication is a right, not a privilege. We agree um, that broadband internet access should be provided for free. And we can start to see as we move where maybe there are areas that aren't consents. So the most divisive statement was around options in choosing an internet provider. Um, and in that case, what is this, this is just telling us that a lot of people felt like they, they had options and a lot of people didn't. And you could see here that everyone in group A says that they do have options, but people in group C say they don't. Um, this was also divisive around needing to know how the internet works and just wanting access. And these are around speed. Um, this is interesting. This one, whether or not the government uh, should own and provide internet to all its residents, this is um, a little bit divisive. There's people in group C that are unsure and that do agree in comparison to the other groups. Um, so this is what we are using to sort of harvest and seed our conversation. And um, I'd be happy to go. I can, I think for now I want to start there 
Um, start with, this is actually what I used to do our harvesting. But as you go through it, you can see what the majority statements are, what most people agreed with. Um, you can also start to see how the groups might break down in terms of like different metadata. So uh, for example, groups B and C do not contain members that work in the NYC public library branch system, but group A does. Um, let me see others that are different. There is right now, as of right now, there's no one that lives in public housing that's taken this survey. Um, We've got some folks in telecommunications. So this is also um, important as we start to think about this. And I think this is something that we need to keep in mind throughout the session is the who's not in this room, right? And we'll be um, working through that with, with um, in our exercise as we identify stakeholders. But it is something that um, at least as we look, look at this survey, there is a bit of um, sort of maybe a homogenous group feel here. Um, and, then it, and then it breaks down by the groups and what made those groups unique um, and what makes them and how they compare against the other groups. So there might be some similarities, um, but they are different. So for example, everyone in group B pretty much as agrees that they don't need to know how the internet works, they want access, but group A and C um, do want to know. So you can start to dive in and kind of get a nice range of information. But like I say, from today, we want to work a bit on, in this area, sort of the statements that have consensus that aren't too divisive, that, that we need to sort of start to tease apart, right? Because if we just say NYC government should support a decentralized municipal broadband option, but not administer or own the service, then what else, right? Um, and I think when it comes to shaping policy, the more that we can go there with uh, actual concrete ideas that are grounded in sort of facts with research and examples, the more that you can push that conversation forward. Um, and also personally for myself, when I think about how we co-shape sort of direction and policy with our government, I think it's important to take them ideas um, because otherwise they might read that and decide to implement their own thing, right? Um, so we want to try to get down to sort of like how, how might we actually do that, right? Like how might this actually work? How could this work um, down to more of a specific level? So let me run through what we'll be working on today. Um, I sent everyone a link for this mural board, which is going to be our collaborative issue mapping and development. And so here's an example of um, basically what we'll do. I'm going to walk through an example, and then we together are going to pick the statements, but then you'll get to self-select your breakout groups and what you want to tackle. There was a question in the chat from Linda. What about people in supportive housing? Um, I was talking to somebody the other day who lives in supportive housing. I actually, I'm retired and I live in NYCHA. And um, a lot of seniors were given tablets. And a lot of people in supportive housing, they have limited income and they can't afford to have unlimited internet access. So, and I, and I would, you know, and they don't get the resources that people in NYCHA get, but they are in support, supportive housing. That you live, you live in New York, right? Well, so, so a lot of people live in supportive housing. So that's another program and they don't get the resources that, that NYCHA people get, or they don't get certain resources that some of the seniors have been getting with, I think New York City gave away 10,000 tablets uh, through the mayor's office. And a lot of people didn't know about it. And I just found out the other day that it was just for people 65 and up. And the person I was talking to was 50 years old in supportive housing and they didn't get any resources. So I was saying to her that the social workers are not doing their job because they should be trying to bring resources to their facilities. So that's why I mentioned uh, supportive housing, people who want broad broadband that might live in supportive housing that may not have any mental issues. They're just there because they came out of the shelters, but they need uh, broadband and you know, um, 
unlimited uh, internet access. So that's what I was talking about. Okay. So thank you so much, Linda. That potentially, I mean, that this wasn't in, it was not one of the statements from Polis, but I'm happy to actually add it as we um, kind of break through what might be some, some group areas to focus on. It sounds like you're very interested in solutions for Wi-Fi to supportive housing. Okay, so the first plan is to decide what statements we want to tackle. Um, and I'm gonna add um, supportive housing here, Linda's, unless there's any objections, because we didn't see it and I think it's, it's an important area. Um, so maybe it's like, it's actually easier for me to think about the how might we of this one. So I'm going to do it this way. So I pulled a few of these out to get us started, just to help us out. Um, and I'm going to ask Erica if she can help with supportive housing providers, HPD and other agents who assist people. Okay. Um, and keeping an eye on chat or anything, but our plan right now is to rephrase. Okay, thanks, Greta. I think we can we can disambiguate that when we get to the how might how might we we portion of that. Um, so our goal right now is to rephrase these statements into how might we to sort of the idea behind this is that this form of thinking actually expands our, our idea generation process instead of just stating something. So, um, and also we'll start to see that some of these have some interrelation and overlap. And so depending on how y'all wanna break out and tackle these in groups, um, we, might, we might figure that out, but all right. So for the first one, do, 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 I believe that broadband internet access should be provided for free to NYC residents. So what is a potential how might we statement for this? You can type in the chat or you can uh, go ahead and grab the mic. Yeah, this is Stuart Reed speaking from uh, Digital Divide Partners. And uh, one of the ways that we are currently providing free Wi-Fi in public housing is through community network partnerships with resident associations. And uh, basically the network is co-owned and operated by residents themselves. Uh, we are their technical partner. And, uh, you know, it's been a challenge to, to get it up and running, but it works. And uh, it's really empowering for the residents. And, uh, you know, of course the challenge is to find the funding to expand and sustain. But we've been doing this for about, <laughs> excuse me, about five years now. And, uh, so getting Stuart, very good I'm, feedback from residents. I'm just going to put a put a pin there. I think that's what what you're sharing is fantastic. This to me is is a fantastic sort of idea or solution that we're going to be that we're going to be um, adding in the next in that next phase. But do you have a, a way that you might rephrase this statement into a how might we question? Do you have a thought? Yeah, you know, my, my whole uh, sense is how might we partner with residents? To meet their uh, broadband needs, how might we? How might we partner part with of residents? Okay, how might we partner with residents to meet their broadband needs? You know, that's a way that to approach the situation in a non-paternalistic way. Uh, so often, we so-called experts think that we know and have the answers, and and and, and we don't. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right. Does anyone have another how might we for this? Or are we good to move on to the next one? Um, hi, everybody. If I'm understanding this right, um, I mean, I think a how might we would be, how might we um, ensure sus sustainable funding for such a thing? Okay. There's Just also another one in the chat from Loretta. How might we provide for, might Provide products for free to perfect. I will add that. And I think those are good three. How might we for that one? Fantastic. All right, those are great. Now we've got our how might we 
brains running. Let's try this one. I want NYC to provide a municipal broadband option to all residents like water or utilities. So this one is focusing on the idea that municipal broadband would be considered a utility, like how we receive water or electricity. Any thoughts from folks? Jolie. Um, not exactly, but I have just have a comment before we go too far is how do we define broadband? Is broadband just high speed internet or is it like triple play or what? That's a great question. So here it was defined as minimum bandwidth speeds of 25 mega, uh, megabits per second download and three upload and target band download speeds of 100 upload download and 10 upload. So my suggestion would be, you know, might well, our question is, might we define that as high speed Internet rather than broadband to avoid computer? OK, are you saying that there's a, there's a disambiguation between broadband and inter versus high speed? That's what I'm saying. OK, so I am going to note this mostly as a potential area of. So Erica saying broadband is currently defined by the federal, the FCC as 20. OK. It sounds like there are some additional nuances in there. Is it OK that for our purposes, if we um, use this definition and also and also tie it to high speed Internet for now? Sure. I just want to get that in there just so that uh, before we get going, so we know what we kind of know what we're talking about. So we're talking about broad, we're saying broadband, but we mean high speed Internet. That's what I see. Okay. Greta, you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, going back to the question of um, a municipal broadband option, like water or utility, I'm going to put in here how might we, that is, how might we anticipate and strategize around pushback from the telecom industry. I see in chat from Julie, how might we ensure accountability and community control in a municipal option? Julie, is that for, the, uh, for this municipal broadband? Yes, it is. Rob, okay, this is a great note, Rob. They need to define what acceptable internet would actually be. Hi, Mika. Hi. What'd you have? You Does have anyone me? else have a how might we for the broadband? And I'm, I see a raised hand. Julie. There was, I was just going to point out there was one in chat uh, from Lorita. Uh, who would it operate under? Who would it operate under? It's an interesting question. Is that for the... For the municipal option. Okay. How might we frame this? And how can we re reframe this into a how might we question? Or does it tie to this other one that was that was consensed on, uh, which is the next one, NYC government should support a decentralized municipal broadband option, but NYC government should not administer or own the service. M Melissa, all right, I like this rephrase. How might we ensure fair administration and regulation of broadband? I think that is a fantastic rephrase of Lord Lorita. Does that? Yes, Larita. Okay. All right. Um, it's just about um, accountability because even if uh, if the government isn't going to run it, they would have to regulate it. So, like, even if you had a government component of it, you know, we don't want another agency. I'm hoping <laughs> that sort of will. <laughs> that much we don't, and we have to realize the government ne doesn't necessarily have the um, expertise in itself. So there's going to have to be a lot of partnerships. Right. So does this, does this work for the, how might we ensure fair administration regulation? I think that's getting away. Yes, miss that one. And I guess the accountability piece above, how might we ensure accountability and community? Well, not necessarily community control, but that could be a component as well. I just think this one way of um, looking at it, since this is supposed to be, I guess, a design lab or throwing out ideas, not looking at one way to solve every problem in every neighborhood or every community. Absolutely. 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 
They're great. There's lots of how might we's for groups to tackle. All right, so this one is similar. It says it should support a decentralized option, but it should not administer or own the service. Does anyone have any thoughts for this one? Or do you feel that some of the how might we's on the next one and the municipal broadband option to all residents kind of capture this? This kind of feels like, how might we ensure fair administration or regulation of municipal broadband if they're not gonna administer or run the service? Julie, how might we identify partnerships across sectors to support a municipal option? I'll just say that there's a model, which is the, the MNN, the way that the public access cable is uh, administered, you know, where, and, you know, even for funding that, uh, you know, the, the, the franchisees pay a, pay an amount of money which funds the uh, the service and it's it's and it it's independent of, of of the city for the exact reason of the city doesn't want to be responsible for any content. That's fantastic, Jolie. I hope that we can capture that in in one of the ideas for the breakout sessions. Um, just here. Uh, Ankit, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, please correct me if I haven't, has um, contributed, how might we ensure small and large ISPs have a fair shot at funding under a decentralized system? Okay. Those are good. Uh, so there are a couple more that I had pulled out. Um, that we can generate some how might we's over if folks are interested or if we feel, I think we've got enough questions here for our, that we could tackle in breakout groups. But these were, um, these were some other things that came up. These are from Polis and this was part of what was raised here. So I do wanna address it. Um, if there's this, how might we provide internet access to people in supportive housing? I don't think I added, I, um, I was just saying in the chat, supportive housing can kind of be a lot of different things, I think, in the way that um, the city looks at service delivery or like other private providers. So supportive housing could could mean a lot of things. And I think it is imp really important to talk about supportive housing beyond NYCHA for sure. Uh, but it'll it'll that'll mean like a lot of different things, I think unless I'm missing something specific. Okay. Do we wanna um, go ahead and break these down into how might we questions? Are there folks that are, that are interested in, in delving into these, these two areas? Or do we feel like we have enough how might we's that are piquing people's interest to, to like dive in to solve? Let's just uh, vote with reactions because that'll help me see um, who feels that we have, there are enough. How might we statements that feel interesting and that you're excited to sit and generate ideas around? One thing that isn't mentioned there is computer literacy, which perhaps is another topic altogether. You know, people, it's all very well giving people internet, but they need to know how to use. Okay, do you have a how might we? For that one, Jolie? Um, how might we ensure computer literacy? So it was about like half and half. And I don't know if that's just like folks are away from their computers or if that's actual gauge of interest. Are we part? Yes, 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 yes. So let's vote on which how might we's, which are the yellow cards, are most interesting. Okay. So um, thanks folks for participating. Now what we're going to do is break into breakout groups um, and each breakout group will get to tackle one of these questions. So what we'd like to do now is um, one person, pick a person in the group as your spokesperson to walk us through your conversation. Um, 
And I think it would be good to hear from all the groups first, and then uh, wherever we are with time or interest, we can start to capture um, questions or uncertainty. But also, if you're following along on your mural board and you have a question or you identify something, you can add a post-it into that little breakout area uh, to capture your own thoughts if you're not able to share them to the group. Does anyone want to volunteer to go first? And Erica, do folks, do other folks have the ability to share their screen? I can add that. Or I can. I think, I think people have access now. Okay. So would anyone like to go first and share out your creative thinking around this? All quiet. No one wants to volunteer. I'll volunteer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Ankit. Um, I was in the group, uh, how might we be able to design and provide free Wi-Fi to NYCHA and other supportive housing? Um, and we had a discussion about like what one, what is NYCHA and, and supportive housing? Um, and really the, the conversation we had folks that have a lot of experience um, working with these, uh, uh, with, with NYCHA, um, not only just in New York City, but working with public housing or um, around the world. <laughs> um, and so we had a really rich conversation about uh, what public private partnerships would look like, how might they be structured, who would manage um, a partnership like that where a telecom provider, let's say, is partnering with a local NGO um, and, you know, kind of building the, the NGO representing the community um, to have a have a service that's provided free of charge. There were questions around like, well, OK, there's bureaucracy to installing hardware in buildings and um, and then potentially questions around surveillance that we we grappled with. Um, we talked about like, what does this look like for it to be sustainably funded? Um, you know, how, like, what, is it subsidized? Is it, you know, is, are the telecoms asked to completely pay for it? Will they push back on that? Um, and throughout this, we were talking about the different stakeholders because it was decentralized, we started with residents, but then brought in the bandwidth providers and the NGOs, um, all the agencies, city agencies that need to be involved in order to to deal with this, uh, uh, how, do, how does philanthropy get involved? Do they do so and, you know, for a certain amount of time and then what happens, who picks up the slack after that? Um, and yeah, I think that that's kind of where we ended. Um, I think this is a, it was a really interesting conversation and would love to see, I think, some documentation around, around it. All right, thank you so much for sharing. And let's dive to, does anyone, one of the other groups want to? Yes, yeah, so I can go next on the bottom um, part of the board. We, um, our group, uh, which included uh, Lorita, Rob, and Noel, and Sam, and Pavel, and myself, <laughs> uh, we tackled the question, how might we ensure accountability and community control? So um, we, we kind of tried to organize ideas roughly into three themes. The first one was about like what sort of governance structure would that include? And um, we also talked about the importance of maybe making this considering like if it could be a regional program to um, account for like regional risks, like for example, like how Hurricane Sandy impacted the entire region and not just New York City. Um, we also talked about how New York watersheds like expand beyond New York City. And so that could be um, a source of like inspiration for that. Um, then we also talked about like the pros and cons of having multiple broadband options and like there are kind of implications there for accountability in terms of like the economics, like the pricing. Um, and also I think that ties back into some of the risks we, um, about mismanagement. Um, and then our, our third kind of theme was around education and ensuring that people who are implementing these solutions who are in these agencies have the right expertise. Um, and 
um, I think that also ties back into like general education um, and like public awareness too. Um, and then we, we identified a lot of stakeholders um, uh, that, that might be involved with some of these different ideas. Um, Those are great. Those are great. Um, I'll hold my further comment for the next group, the last group to go. Thank you so much for sharing. I think our last group is all the way at the top. And this is, oop, not too far. In mural space. All right, how might we anticipate and strategize pushback from telecoms? Should someone from this group um, share? Um, I can jump in. Um, so for ideas, we talked about um, doing research on telecom uh, industry practices and kind of calling out um, any examples of kind of discriminatory practices to create a set of kind of talking points to raise awareness about this. Um, also the idea of tracking those companies' profit margins and actually connecting to, you know, the owners of those companies to kind of personalize the issue and, and make people familiar with who they are. Um, we also talked about community advisory councils as a way to kind of give input on the municipal option. Um, yeah, helping people understand kind of the status quo and the current offerings. Um, there was an idea around outlining areas where telecom industry perhaps could still provide coverage focused on more like high income neighborhoods. Um, yeah, and then we talked about organizing and advocacy, um, potentially including protests, national organizing and coalition. Um, and then we had some examples of, of partnerships here in New York. Um, and that overlaps with some of the resources that we included, um, including NYC DSA Tech Action Group. Um, and there are a couple other links and examples of municipal um, internet options. And yeah, some of the risks, uh, just thinking about lawsuits from the telecom industry. Um, there was a comment about like the FBI and NSA um, you know, controlling social activity, lots of thoughts around like, um, how are we thinking about usage guidelines and making sure that issues around privacy and free speech are kind of built in as values in the municipal option. Um, we didn't really get to stakeholders, but um, Monique joined us from Detroit and, and she was saying how there are really only two providers there. So it's a very, you know, not many options. Um, and the fiber providers aren't set up to do residential. And I think that's it from our group. Okay, these are really fantastic. And so I, I was jumping into various groups and then one of the groups they're like, well, we don't, we don't have this municipal option yet, right? We don't, so a lot of this is, is, in a, is in a space of sort of desire and where we hope to go. And this exercise is really, really the tip of the iceberg, right? To continue these conversations in any one of these sections and really expand upon these ideas, what we actually would need to do is to start to bring in those stakeholders and engage them in the conversations. And that's sort of the importance of, find, of, of identifying these stakeholders because to me, these are the beginnings of conversations. Um, and they also start to point to sort of areas where we might need more information or where we might need to disambiguate and elevate some more facts or define things more clearly. Um, but what I hope is that these conversations continue, right? And that you start to say, okay, so let's, you know, let's bring in someone or how do we get the closest representative from a telecom industry into our conversation? It might be difficult, but how do they get there? Um, so I just wanted to say that, but I want to open the floor for any um, reactions, questions, thoughts from folks. Hey, it's Greta. I'm jumping in to say that we, um, I think this, and I'm curious, CS, if 
you find this because you do a lot of this deliberative work and it works at its own pace. Like as you're saying, these are conversations, right? And it's it takes time. Um, however, I think this month and next month, I'm, I'm thinking back to the session that CTNY had on Thursday um, that was led by um, Sam Grassley and Hannah Sun, which was about the mayoral race, which is heating up right now. So I think we're gonna see this month and next month are gonna be really important in the mayoral race. And then the other thing that I mentioned at the beginning is there's all this money heading our way from the federal government and we need to collectively like be able to funnel that money into stuff. Um, and so how do you kind of work at a deliberative pace when there's these very pressing kind of action steps that need to happen? Like, is, is there a way, for example, to say like, okay, um, what we found on Thursday, the mayoral candidate candidates, their are their positions on this stuff are not very well formed yet. So is there an opening there that we could funnel the deliberative conversations into that, like pushing them towards like better, you know, filling in their plans, for example? Yeah, great question. Absolutely. Do you do you have like access to these candidates? Like, can you convene these candidates together or is that is that harder to do? That's probably harder. Like, I I don't know. I mean, I think they're I think that they yeah, I don't know. I think it's harder because there's what, 40 of them. <laughs> so I, we were thinking, you know, maybe it's like an invitation to like, if you send us something, we'll post it somewhere, like, or we'll like do a rundown of, I don't know, a summary of everybody's position or something. I don't know though, what the deliberate, what a more deliberative step would be. Yeah. So it kind of, it, it depends, right? Because you could, um, so let me ask one more question here. Is there a place online that's just like facts and information about, about like broadband internet access, you know, a lot of these like places where they can go find some of the resources that are even named here or just like kind of distilled out. Is that exist? I don't think so. Sam, are you, are you on? What, what did you find when you were researching? Yeah, no, I mean, I think uh, in terms of what's out there, in terms of information about New York City, it's really been mostly oriented around the Internet Master Plan and the work that's been going on there. And then um, when I was researching the candidates and their positions, it was either, you know, something mentioned on their website or if they've had public office before, you know, the comptroller actually does a lot of like that fact based like reporting work. And so they have the benefit of having more analysis around it. Um, but yeah, I mean, to the point, there is no centralized location for all of this. There hasn't been a mayoral forum specifically around technology and broadband. So um, I think that our hope is to sort of bubble up these ideas to make sure, you know, even though there's so much going on that, that they're covered as well. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's important then to have a place where they can find the facts and, and even if that's a subdomain of like CTNY, since you are a big authority in this and, and maybe you list other folks that are there, but start putting the facts out, not only for them, but also for residents. So people can be like, what is this, right? Okay, there's this website that I go to, to like learn about the facts. Cause even at the beginning here, we had that nuance, right? What's broadband, what's high speed internet? Like all those questions are things that we wanna start identifying um, for people. And especially I think for politicians or folks that you can't reach, right? It's, it's hard to be like, come engage in a room with me. Um, so that would be one of the first things I would, I would definitely dedicate is, is a spot where that information is a clean URL where people can go to. Um, in terms of like continuing the deliberative process, uh, I think, I mean, I would probably run more workshops. I think really, if you can do like a half, a half day or even sometimes you can't get all the stakeholders in the room together, but if you can get a couple with other folks, then you can start working in from their perspective. Um, 
because often the biggest thing is just how do we listen to each other and hear all of our sort of different concerns? And now I, I think things like the telecom industries and big organizations that, that we have seen through this work have a history of like suing local options. Those are, those are definitely different beasts, right? Than, than, um, than a municipal, than like someone in the government. And I actually think that to get to those stakeholders, you probably need that um, mayoral or government support to call them to the table and be like, actually, we need you in our conversation. Um, but yeah, the first thing I would do for that is start with the facts. And then, I mean, it really depends on your capacity. There's a part of me that's like host more conversations and like move them around and invite and make sure that these results get posted and write like, you know, distilling blog posts for people so that they understand what's happening. Um, but yeah, it's gonna, it's tough because you're, I guess this would be a larger conversation of sort of understanding how CTNY fits into the larger conversation to think about how to like strategize around that more fully, which I, I'm happy to, we should chat. <laughs> yeah. I think like this, this is the, my takeaway from open data week is basically that there's sort of a gap in the ecosystem sort of, um, although I know there are lots of folks. Yeah, so I was just going to say DSA Tech, there are folks out there working on this. I think, um, you know, I think let's, I, I would love to talk more with you, you all at DSA and think about, you know, what makes sense for like where to put what info and, um, yep, and ISOC. Right, so um, it's, it just feels to me like we need fo a follow-up. <laughs> Like we need to identify like this gap and, and who like really understand if there is a gap um, and then how it fits into the things that are happening. Um, so our folks, I just, if we could, I know CSC, like I'd love for you to wrap it up. I'd love to, to just know if folks are okay with us uh, reaching back out. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And I'm super excited to brainstorm post looking at everything and kind of hear a little bit more about where you're at and offer some, some thoughts from things I've seen. Um, Jolie, you mentioned town halls. Yes. This in some ways, this is like a modified town hall, but some you can do a facilitated town hall. Okay. Well, we are at the mark, but just to quickly close, I just want to ask everyone to say a word that reflects how they're leaving this meeting or how they feel after, after today. Um, the mural is open. That is a link. Please take a look at other folks' ideas, add, add things in there on your own post-its if you want to. Um, I hope that really the conversation um, continues. And I view this as sort of that start and, and I think with a little bit more just digesting what's in those conversations, there are threads and things that can get pulled out to, to dive deeper. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna say that I'm, um, I'm really excited. I'm super, I feel really excited and thankful to be brought into this conversation, something I really care about um, and just excited by the ideas that come out of it and the opportunity to, to, to see what comes forward. So excited is my word. Um, and I'm going to pass to Rob. Okay, um, I think I'm still feeling contemplative. So I think it was nice to have a space to just think through with other people. Um, I will pass it to uh, Lorita. Lorita, you're on mute. Still on mute. We okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm feeling um, there's still lots of work to be done, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, and I'm hoping that uh, we can get it done. So. Uh, and there's a lot of stakeholders and players. And if we work together, we can have access for everybody, adequate access. And I guess I'll pass it, like what's here? <laughs> uh, I don't know who, Jolie? 
<laughs> see what's showing up on my. Um, I'll say, oh, I've got an echo. Hang on a minute. But I'll just back up what Larita says. It's not a simple, you know, it's a complicated thing. And, you know, just looking at this, there's just so many vectors and, and you know, such a variety of aspects of this thing that is, you know, there's a lot to sort out. There's a lot of work there. about so, Monique? And I'll pass it to, uh, is Monique here? I certainly... Monique and I met at a chapter workshop, an Internet Society chapter workshop a couple of years ago, and uh, she's really done marvelous work in Detroit. If she's here, I'll pass yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yes, so good uh, to see you again. And um, my word is inspired because it's just wonderful to see this uh, type of coming together and collaboration and lots of thoughts. So more than one word, but inspired. And I will pass it on to Julie. Swoop, swoop, is it swoop? Okay, Julie, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, I would say I feel optimistic. I think uh, I think a lot of the um, issues around internet access are shared by a lot of people. And I think if we can work together to solve them, then uh, we have a really good chance of success. Uh, I'll pass to Erica. Thanks, Julie. Um, yeah, I had a similar feeling. I think my word is like collaborative. Like I think there is so much potential for building these big coalitions and and people power to push this ahead. Um, I will pass it to Hassan. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to repeat what has been said uh, in the room regarding the governance and sustainability, which is divided to, into financial sustainability and technical sustainability. I think those two issues needs to be documented somehow and then discussed again, because they are very relevant, if this is relevant to what we are doing. Thanks a lot. I'll pass it to Stuart. Thank you. Um, I certainly feel uh, connected as a result of this, not that I was disconnected, but uh, you know, more folks that are uh, involved in, in meeting uh, this challenge, these challenges is great. And I, I would like to ask, is there going to be a follow-up where uh, we get everyone's email and contact information? I was a little late joining and don't know even where everyone, uh, you know, what their background is, what organization they may be associated with. So that would be helpful in terms of follow-up. Thank you. How about Julie? I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta, pa I gotta pass it on, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll pass it on to Greta. I don't think you spoke, did you Greta? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I feel deliberative and it's an exciting feeling because I think um, it's, you know, uh, those of us who are working all the time in digital equity and broadband, there's a lot of urgency and speed and there's a lot of like racing ahead of stuff that's happening. And yet, if we are going to actually use the democratic process to achieve our goals here, we're gonna have to slow down and be deliberative. And um, Bianca Wiley pointed out something recently that, you know, it's great that we have this new uh, Federal Trade Commission that's going to really dive into trust busting and, you know, all this stuff happening to reform the private sector. But, but the private sector is never going to act just in the public interest. They're always going to protect to their shareholder interests. So how do we actually, I don't want to say reform, but how do we like rediscover democracy and deliberation for what we want to see, even when it's something incredibly complex like broadband and internet. Um, so I'm really excited to keep doing this work 
with you all and um, feel like I've learned so much. So I'm really, oh, the second word I'll use is grateful, grateful to CS and Erica for um, creating this space for deliberation. I think we haven't heard from Julie Pedic. Ped Sorry, I'm horrible with names. No worries. Um, yeah, I just also wanted to say feeling very grateful for the space. So thank you for facilitating. Um, it's kind of a new topic area for me. So just feeling really excited to learn more. Um, are there other folks who haven't shared yet? There anyone that didn't, didn't hear from Madhavan. I didn't yeah. hear Madhavan. Did you speak? Uh, hi, am I audible? Yep. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was interesting to see uh, one of the new, what to say, uh, setups like, you know, uh, setting a free broadband, uh, uh, addressing a new issue in the community, actually. So I have never addressed a new, com I, don't, I generally do not attend uh, social issues uh, in public, but uh, I am into educational community. Yeah. So this was beautiful, actually. Talking to the people, talking to the community, and understanding what goes around. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Thank you. It's also really, I'm really touched to hear folks that are coming in that are new to this, and that they were, you know, able to to contribute. And I think that's really what we we want to aim for. It shouldn't be something that you have to be fully informed about to participate and have a voice. That's part of the the aim of these processes is to learn along the way and to and to contribute from from your experience. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for letting me facilitate and for your attention over these two hours. Um, really big thanks to Greta and Erica for this opportunity. And Erica, thank you for all your help throughout this week. Um, do you all have something that you want to say for closing? Just reiterate the gratefulness and excited to continue this work with you all. And um, I, I'll, I'll say that um, I, and I'm going to mention um, Marvan as well, because just listening to the voice, New York is setting uh, precedents like uh, across the nation. And I would say because uh, Marvan's in India, we could say across the world as a model of uh, what you're doing in terms of uh, pushing the direction for municipal broadband, for coverage, for inclusiveness. So. Thank you all for continuing to uh, work and push power to these spaces that's being shared across the world. That's fantastic. I think it's a great note to end on. Thank you. And thank you all so much for your time.